Yeah, hello. Hello, Glenn. Hi. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I think uh, I think they're messing with me now, Glenn. Um, because I've been posting your stuff like crazy, like oh yeah, like, you know, stuff from the newspapers and um, making videos on YouTube, and um, all of a sudden like, I can't even like use my computer; it just won't start for me now. It's just like I started, and it's just the windows are shut down. And, um, you gotta like, clean it up every time. <laughs> You so, know how to do that? Yeah, I gotta um yeah, I gotta re re um uh yeah, when I clean everything out and Yeah, boot it, reboot it. <laughs> I I think they're like on to me, man. They know who I am. They've been uh doing that to me for years. <laughs> oh man. They it's can get... the telephone company and Norton. Mm. Yeah, uh, Norton's actually the virus. Yeah. Oh wow. Trojan horses mm-hmm, exactly. tend to be your friends on the outside, but on the inside, they defend the system. Yeah. Oh man. And I knew, and I, and I seen it coming, but um, now I don't think I'll be able to use that thing for like uh, because now it won't start. Like when I start it, it'll just keep restarting. So I think I'm gonna have to just get a new one, and that's not gonna be for. Maybe like three, four months because I, I spent so much money on like uh, <laughs> buying like old encyclopedias and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah. yeah. Um, I have you ever part of the lessons learned? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you ever seen that movie, um, The Wicker Man? Yep. In '73. Yeah. I I I've, I've seen something in there that had me curious. I heard other people mention it. Like, uh, do you know what the Green Man is, a Freemason? No. No? Green basically stands for the future. Oh. So if somebody's talking about Green Man, they're talking about Future Man. Oh. It's like, like Wicker Man. The man's on the inside, whereas yeah. there's a a basket around them called a woman. But the woman is not a woman, it's a wee man. Yeah, yeah. That reminds me too. I was just reading um, uh, Nietzsche's book, "The uh, Thus Spoke Zarathustra." Yeah. He gets really deep, but then yeah. he, he acts like he's not religious, but you see the religious overtone. Of course, <laughs> of course. And then he takes you another direction. He, yeah, you know, like he even calls women like cows, and and basically yeah. they all they just there to get pregnant and yeah. Stuff. It's uh, every every philosopher who is allowed to become famous mm-hmm. has uh, another approach to the system. Yeah. They're all in on it, yeah. or they wouldn't be uh, looked upon as classics. Yeah. It's just their approach is different, and it makes it appear as if they're competing forces, yeah. you know, like... Uh, uh, Plato, Socrates. Uh, yeah, it's 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 all the same stuff. Just like politics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. I seen that display. Like I thought it was gonna be a little different when you were talking about the the different numbers of different designer slaves. Like you use like a Desdemona code. Like yeah. you would you had the mirrored nine and. And I guess, and it was like an eye, you said an all-seeing eye. I guess that would be the lesbian that would be able to infiltrate. Well, that was the process by which they learned what they wanted to do. Uh At first, they expanded on the gay from a natural 5% of the population and boosting it up to 15% in some areas. When that didn't give them what they were looking for, Mm -hmm. they went back and worked um, in Lesbos on the lesbian. When that didn't work completely, they they tried different levels of uh, cross-gender. And they, they still felt they didn't have it right. 
So the only thing that they could think of is to start changing the actual individual, starting with a male, giving it a female outside, then entering inside, giving it a medulla from the Neanderthaler, and finally giving it um, communications capabilities. And uh, when I looked this week at uh, uh, Nadal and and uh, Federer play tennis, mm-hmm. they start the game, they play like they can, perfect. And then all of a sudden, for no apparent reason, they start to make unforced errors. That's the hypothalamus again. Yeah. That's when somebody is activating by remote control their decision-making process. And it doesn't require much. All it does is to knock off their timing at the appropriate moment. So while they're making a decision on whether to hit it high, low, whatever, Mm -hmm. they misplay the ball and it ends up hitting the net or going too far out or whatever. You can have uh, individual sporting events like tennis or Mm -hmm. boxing, but you can also do it to a team event. When a guy's got a breakaway and he goes to shoot, Mm -hmm. uh, boom, the puck goes off over the net someplace because he's, He's lost his concentration for a second. So you think it's like some type of device that like shoots some type of wave? That uh, uh, yeah, it's it has to be electrical mm-hmm. in nature, radio waves of some kind mm-hmm. that affect um, what's happening. Well, that that kind of goes with, with like the cell phone towers and yeah, that type of thing. Like they yeah. do that. Like I've heard on the mass scale. Yeah. Well, they can do it on a mass scale, but uh, there's a lot more money involved in doing it on professional sporting events where they own the gambling world. So everybody that gambles, Mm -hmm. they they work out, you know, what they need as an outcome, and then they can make it happen. Mm -hmm. They build up a team to make it look like it can't lose. Then everybody bets on it, and then they make it lose. Five, ten, fifteen. Ottawa Senators lost from Christmas a year ago to last Christmas, after looking like they wouldn't lose five games all year. So they could make anything happen in the world of sport, and that's the world of gambling. Mm. Now they can make the same thing happen to a politician make a politician lose their thought during a speech, for example, and it makes them look totally inadequate to uh, take over reins of power. Mm. Whenever there's a new contender that comes out to challenge the one they prefer, uh, the person loses their train of thought. So that reminds me, like Al Gore, like that um, that word, Gore. Yeah. Uh, Regal. Oh, okay. Regal. So, so, so Lila, right? Is a. Yeah. And Google has Rego in it. Most people can't see it, mm-hmm. but because it has L E at the end mm-hmm. and an L stands for left, mm-hmm. you can replace it with an R that stands for right. Oh. So you have L-E at the end, you replace it with an R, that's R-E, and you have Go right beside it, so it's Rego. So, um, Go, Rego. Rego. So that's in that name, too, uh, I- Igor. Igor. Igor, yeah. The, um, because an I can be an E, yeah. and phonetically an I is also Re. Yeah, I've heard you said that too. You said that at five, in another radio 
Uh, you, you said that at five you had an experience with yep. Rigo. What is that? The age of five, uh, that's as far as I can remember because my mother's not here yeah. to confirm anymore. But as a kid, probably at the age of four or five, my mother and her sister-in-law would take me and and my cousin on a train out of Ottawa and go towards Montreal. And just before the train reaches Montreal, it goes through a town called Vaudreuil. Mm -hmm. And in Vaudreuil, there was a stop, and it was called Rigaud. And it was spelled R-I-G-A-U-D. And in Rigo, there mm -hmm. was a monastery, and there was a um, a cave and a grotto and a, a statue of the Virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother uh, and my aunt would take us in there, and it was loaded with people. It was either a Saturday or a Sunday, something like that. It was loaded with people. All of a sudden, I was taken aside by, for a long time, I thought it was an angel or a dream or something that I couldn't remember exactly. Mm -hmm. But it was a priest. Uh, he told me that I had a special role in life, that there was a... Um, woman I had to find, mm -hmm. um, and I would only know that woman by uh, looking at her breast. At my age of five, I wasn't sure what he was talking about, and he had to explain that it was something they had under their dress. Mm -hmm. And so... From that point on in my life, I remember uh, trying to look at breasts every chance I got, mm -hmm. manufacturing some of my own <laughs> <laughs> to the point of becoming uh, known uh, as a tit man. <laughs> and uh, I remember my uh, girlfriends saying, something to the effect of, uh, boy, you're you're single-minded. You know? <laughs> All you can think of is tits. <laughs> and uh, uh, later on in life, t telling me that uh, when I drank, it was even worse. I, was, I lost my inhibitions. <laughs> <laughs> Went around checking out women. Yeah. Even when I was dating with them, you know, <laughs> checking other women. Uh, and uh, I spent 50 years looking uh, probably at more tits than most people would imagine unless they lived in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, ended up finding the woman in British Columbia. Uh, in uh, 1998, I had been told, that woman will tell you what your role is. That's 50 years or so after it happened. But she won't tell you voluntarily. You have to basically listen carefully because she's going to blurt out things. And it's the things she blurts out uh, involuntarily uh, that you will get your clues from. And, um, lo and behold, that woman uh, led us here to this property. Participated the acquisition of the property. Then it was like I was marooned. 
people in the old times when the Phoenicians dropped them off and said, see you in a couple of thousand years okay. uh, in the farm. And I began to investigate the farm, uh, found all of the clues that brought me to believe that this farm has a special reason for living, for being here. And that special reason is linked to the Vikings. Mm -hmm. The Vikings uh, have um, came here and left something here, or or came here to point out that there was something here that was important. Tracing down lead after lead after lead. I came to the conclusion that the answer was in the book of Enoch, which is one of the books of the Hebrew Bible. Yeah. It's, it's basically looked upon as as irrelevant in most of the Christian writings. But Enoch is is basically a word that says the mission of one. Because it has the word C-H. one in there, and uh, C H can be a K, can be a K, and K is the mission. Yeah. So, in in reading about Enoch and his son Methuselah, that's when it became clear that it married up to the Desdemona typeface. That uh, the message of Enoch and Methuselah mm-hmm. is about genetic engineering for everlasting life. That basically meant that they had been given instructions on the genome, which allowed them to reincarnate people who had died. So when in the Bible they say this guy lived for 300 and some years, they don't mean the same person lived for 300 and some years. The DNA? The DNA was used to remake that person on a number of occasions, the total of which was 300 and some years. Then there's another guy, 700 and some years. And then there's Methuselah himself, Nine hundred and sixty-three years, I think it is. When they make these people uh, live for so long, why, why, what's the, why do they do that? You think? Well, it's the point is that you don't live long enough in uh, one lifetime yeah. in order to become strong mm-hmm. and knowledgeable about the system. Oh. It's too much information to mm-hmm. usually be able to come across it in one lifetime. So they have to make you stronger and and tougher. And the model for that is rain. Yeah. yeah. Rain can be returned and made tougher mm-hmm. by by sending it back up into the higher atmosphere. It's like an alchemical alchem- principle. Yeah. yeah. And then again it becomes ice at the end. That model of rain is what is applied to iron. Yeah. And iron has basically four levels, and the first level is iron itself. Yeah, the Lucy. second level is steel. Mm-hmm. Then it's stainless steel. But the ultimate iron is chrome. Oh. And chrome is made up of a combination of metals to harden the steel even more than stainless steel. And that's basically the model they use. Okay, they say, uh, we're going to do it with the woman on the outside. So you start with the letters F-E for femme in French. Mm-hmm. But Fe is also the chemistry iron. iron. Yeah. So that's 
the process. Now, the answers to be found here, you have to go back to Enoch. Enoch's story, and I, I read it a long time ago, uh, was basically about being invited to go someplace to meet with God. And, he, and to bring his son Methuselah along. I mean, all these names are made up. Yeah. Methuselah. Mm-hmm. The, the Sioux. So anyways, he brings Methuselah to this place far away from home, and they go into a building that has many basements. And they go down to the ninth basement. And at the ninth basement, God comes up from down below, obviously, mm-hmm. from the tenth basement. And God has a tablet. And on that tablet is information that he is going to give to Enoch with instructions that it's to be passed down through the generations in his family uh, from person to person. Of course, in the Hebrew uh, world, uh, it's a matrial or matriarchal society, so the the female side of the family uh, will inherit. As they... um, go to part, God takes the plate and cuts it diagonally, gives Methuselah, or Enoch, to give to Methuselah, half the plate and retains the other half. So Methuselah's plate obviously teaches him about genetic engineering. And in the first two tries, They run out of material, and therefore they need to try again, and Methuselah is the the third one, and he lives the longest. And obviously the information that they deciphered was that if you use um, DNA, Mm -hmm. when when you've used it up, you have none left, so you can't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Unless the DNA you have is stem cell DNA. And then instead of using the DNA, you basically use the DNA to make more DNA. And that way you'll have some forever. Yeah. Because you're not ever using up your original capital compared to money. The same thing as putting money in the bank mm-hmm. and only using the interest. Yeah. So that's what Methuselah has, and it's my view that that was handed over mm-hmm. in a place called Elmira, New York, which is uh, on the border with Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. uh, to a guy called Joseph Smith and became the founding uh, relic used by the Latter-day Saints. At one stage of the game, uh, because of the pressures on uh, Mormons, they basically had to send the Latter-day Saints, the genetic engineers, to live separately from the Mormons who are going to follow up on the information by using genetically engineered people made by the LDS and planting them in business and in politics and in uh, religion and in education and in the media. In order to keep track of that, they had to start up their uh, genealogical study at Salt Lake City uh, where they track the movement of these people. All of that being done, 
the question that remains is what happened to the other half of the plate? Mm -hmm. And my view is that in in the story of Enoch, God tells uh, Enoch that at the end times, the two plates will be reunited. And that the place they were talking about Mm -hmm. uh, was here. And that that rock is underground here. It's a a rock that's 100 feet in thickness. You dig a well here, you have to go down 120-some feet Mm -hmm. to get past the uh, topsoil, the rock, and into the sediment below before you can have consistent flow of water. 800 feet below that, again, is the Canadian Shield. So if if one looks at a 100-foot rock as 10 stories of 10 feet each, that could very well be the rock that Enoch and Methuselah were in. The place they were in became known by the Vikings as Vinland, which is the name for uh, the country called Canada when when the Vikings came visiting. So here is where the end times uh, laboratory will be constructed. Uh, my goal basically is to investigate this rock that is down below mm-hmm. and and eventually to build a structure around this rock, uh, which will be appropriate for a meeting Mm -hmm. with the Trogs. Because when they were talking about God coming from below, they are obviously talking about Trogs coming up from down below. And in the story, Scandinavian story of... uh, the end times, a a building is basically used in a place called Ashgard, uh, and that building is the largest building ever built in the world, and it has a roof of shields. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that would be the shield, the Canadian shield that is below the rock that sits on top and would be the actual place where there is a reference, on this rock I shall build my church. Mm. And and the number one is never right. It always has to be number two or sometimes occasionally number three. Uh, But the Dome of the Rock is basically a mosque built on top of the uh, synagogue in Jerusalem. Here, I'm saying that this is the right place, and the rock is there on top of the shields, and we have to prepare for an end times meeting to try to convince the Trogs, Mm -hmm. much like Lot tried to convince God Mm -hmm. uh, that their approach to things is not going to be a winner and there has to be a better way than the destruction of us and them. And if you look at the story of Lot, God says, uh, or Lot says to God, uh, are you going to kill everybody even though some people may be good, mm-hmm. and and uh, God says, "Well, find me fifty." Lot 
hesitate. So he said, well, find me 30. Find me 10. In other words, God is saying, there is nobody that's good. That's why i got to destroy everybody but you and your two daughters in order to make new children thereafter. So here we have arrived at that point again, that allegory. Now, who's good in their eyes? The uh, the new slave, right? The new slave would be good in their eyes because the new slave could be used to uh, basically be the bag ladies of the universe. Uh, Ship them out mm-hmm. all over the place to go look for ways to bring in the loot from different planets. For them, it's not the money that's of interest. The money is only a control mechanism for slaves. Mm -hmm. For them, it's the infrastructure. So they believe that Mm -hmm. there are um, metals and chemistry and science to be learned out in the Oort cloud, the home of of uh, comets, meteors. Yeah, you said that with, um, that was interesting in one article, your old article, you said, like, the crucifix symbol with the, with the circle around it was actually a symbol of them going in all four corners of the universe? Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I never heard the explanation before. Yeah. I thought it was um, just the it's zodiac. Basically, the, the long piece of the cross comes out of the ground, Mm-hmm. and goes up to the stars. And mm-hmm. there's a cross piece that does the earth. But then the circle mm-hmm. is basically telling you the whole solar system, not not just uh, the earth, and that there's communications between up and down yeah. uh, bringing stuff back. Now, how did, that, how did that priest, when you were younger, you ever thought about, like, how did he... How would he know? To well, obviously, with the way they use the word rego all over the place, oh. uh, it's their code word. So they were like, oh, placed there. He would have been part of ecclesiastic Freemasonry. Mm-hmm. would have some um, information about the fact that I had been manufactured and I had been programmed to do certain things, so he would make himself look like God, an angel, something important, because he would know things I didn't know about me. Mm -hmm. And then they would organize an activity that would last all of my life by making certain that I was dragged through a number of experiences to refresh my memory from having lived before, but in modern times, to get it all in, it took him 50 years to basically move me from place to place. And and the um, life I lived brought me in contact with uh, women mostly, because I was looking for kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but uh, along the way, I learned about Uh, school, and I learned about business, and I learned about management and sales and marketing and and politics and religion and media and all of those things uh, which I normally would not have been able to learn had I had one job type of thing. Yeah. So I was being uh, shunted. And the group that did the shunting is the Essenes. They they hide behind the scene, uh, but they have links to Holland, the Mm -hmm. Dutch. Yeah, you said that that Switzerland was like an area of control. Yeah, Switzerland, Holland, uh, they're basically links. Uh, Holland is the pilot that takes you around. Switzerland is the place that keeps the things you you find. A lot of secrecy in banking, which is now being eliminated because we're at the end times. There there will be no more secrecy in banking 
because the tax structure is the same in all countries. Yeah. So they don't need to have one person have secrets over another uh, and not pay taxes. They want everybody to pay the taxes. Mm. Uh, the global banking system. How, what, what was your? What they're orchestrating. Uh, what, what was your? So, what do you think that you were meant to do? Like that they wanted you to do? Oh. Exactly what I'm doing now. Really? But why would? They, uh, what? What? But you're only made tougher when you have to cross the barricades to get to where you're going. They don't take you by the hand and lead you. You have to learn the lessons, gather up the experiences, and it's those experiences you learn by observing, analyzing, and then concluding. And you cannot do that if you only have one experience. So it has to be a multiple number of experiences, many of them with a lot of like activity, uh, until you learn the lesson. You move through, for me it took 50 years, to move through that uh, trial and error process. I now am, am confident that I know what they have in mind, and my task uh, is to uh, assemble the critical mass, which will be acceptable to allowing Earth to continue living, but under a different format than the one they have planned, which is to destroy everybody and start over. So you're saying people within the system are trying to subvert the system? There are at least 13 people out there that uh, are, like me, have a, a piece of the puzzle in them, and some of them would be within the system. I know a number of people within the system mm -hmm. who, were they to make what they know public today, they would be fired and discredited and moved out of the system and not be able to do what um, needs to be done yeah. uh, at the right moment in time. So they have basically provided a sort of security around me and um, have uh, a plan mm -hmm. to um, to have a, um, I guess the, the equivalent we could call a commission on truth and reconciliation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I call it a commission on ruse and Reconcili <laughs> nations, uh, where the evidence would be laid out in a formal court-like atmosphere about where we were at the beginning, hermaphrodites, mm -hmm. what we became, genders, what we were genetically engineered to be, Cro-Magnon, later Roma, mm -hmm and how that evolved into the need for uh, races in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, starting with Asian and Caucasian, and then putting Semites in the middle. So we're, we're all part Cro-Magnon, I guess you say? Like, I beg your pardon? We're all, like, descended from... We're all descendants of Cro-Magnon. Uh, I, I can't imagine... A, a um, African uh, of uh, hermaphrodite origin uh, still being on Earth. Uh, I mean, there may be one, but I can't imagine it. Certainly the system doesn't believe there is. The system believes that their enterprise is a success that they have now completed the conversion of uh, clan mothers into unicorns. 
So they destroyed the, the female. Eh? They destroyed the female. They destroyed the original yeah. woman. Yeah, that's what they wanted. Uh, and replaced it with we man. I looked at uh, uh, when I looked at that article on Lucy. The, yeah. But they try to put them as there was some type of ape woman or something. Yeah. And I guess that's the the misleading part. Well, it, it basically says ape just means you lived in Africa, yeah. where there were apes. Um, Cro-Magnon then became Roma and lived in. Uh, India, where there were apes. But in fact, uh, Neanderthaler, the twin, Mm -hmm. had lived in a totally different place. And the only thing that makes sense is that uh, Turkey sounds like the place they lived in, Mm -hmm. Uh, specifically a place called Chalcedon, Chalcedony or Chalcedon. Do you know any mythologies or allegories that that describes um, the twins, the whole story of the twins? The the entire thing is not located in one place. You can't go pick up a book yeah. and read about it. What you have to do is as I've told you before, As go most. through encyclopedias and and dictionaries co- cover to cover, and through that mechanism, you pick up pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that are seemingly unrelated to anything but look important, and you put that into memory. Mm-hmm. And as you go through, all of a sudden you realize that what you have there is a jigsaw puzzle. And it deals with Neanderthaler as um, uh, a mouse, yeah. uh, Boostrian society, which is is basically a a an allegory for living within the uh, ooze or the sediment of the earth, what is above but below the sea. And and it's marshy and it's watery. Um, Mars, marsh, the mission. Is is they're all bits and pieces that yeah. by themselves mean nothing, but assembled together, yeah, it's saying that from an area of the Pyrenees across uh, the mountains into the Alps. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I see the pieces like from just the little research that I done, but it's yeah. just a lot of it's just spread apart, and you gotta yeah. Through the Balkans and into Turkey. Mm. And it seems that that's about the general area they're talking about. Mm. Now, when they're talking about Roma, they're talking about India, mm-hmm. and then northern India, which is now mostly Pakistan, and and the links to the laboratory, mm-hmm. which is in the Himalayas, 16 different countries that have kind of an influence on that area, and um, the central place then between the Neanderthalers and the Africans would would then be the Middle East. So a clan of priests is sent out of India to establish the Giza Plateau to make it the model of things to come. It's it's like K3. Oh, okay. Kilimanjaro being K1, the Himalayas, Himalayas having K2, and the Giza Plateau being K3. From there, they begin the process of 
um, trying to influence what is going to happen in the northern hemisphere. And they give information to the Egyptian group, but at one stage of the game, they find that the uh, gypsies that are Egyptians and priests let them down. They, in fact, uh, screwed up the whole color scheme. Yeah, because they had sex with the... Uh... Because they had sex with Africans. Yeah. And the Africans, I guess they weren't supposed to be traveling like the Roma. Well. No, the Africans are supposed to stay there and wait until the end times because their job is to provide half the DNA to the Caucasian DNA so that when it's combined together, will make the color of the Ten. future slave mulatto. That's why the mission is 10, right? And that's why slaves are taken out of Africa and brought to America under the domination of Caucasian uh, landowners. They knew that if it wasn't the landowner, it would be his sons who would eventually be screwing the best-looking African slaves. Mm -hmm. And the end product would be Jesse Jackson <laughs> yeah. and Barack Obama. Actually, I've seen lighter tones than that. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, uh, so. Uh. <laughs> so that that's that was planned right from the beginning. Slavery is not an accident. The uh, abolition of slavery is not an accident. Uh, Women having no rights is not an accident. Women getting rights today is not an accident because there are no women. They're not giving rights to women. There are none there. The women have been basically used as porcelain, yeah. as veneer on a male with a um, medulla and pawns remote control network so that it will be sent out in the universe. The female role is uh, two things. Marketing, a woman's appearance has a more influential yeah, it does. Uh, uh, possibility of selling a concept, an idea. Yep. And number two, it has the structure that given a jar of eggs, it can, in fact, artificially insert the egg and her one testy, because she's a pseudo-hermaphrodite, a phony hermaphrodite, she still has a testy, can, in fact, uh, uh, fertilize the egg and begin the process of putting I think, out I think dye. I think that's the biggest deception, one of the yeah. biggest deceptions. It is. Yeah. Of course it is. And, and that's why we need to get to a stage where we talk face-to-face -face with the Neanderthalers or their computer model. Um, and this is where it has to be done. Yeah, that reminds me, too. Like I, heard, I remember you saying in the past that... Yeah. That we're genetically fixed to like live a certain amount of years. Yeah. So the lifespan of these Neanderthals is what like longer than. I have no idea, even if there is a Neanderthaler still alive. Oh, the I computer. suggest mm -hmm. that there is. One hundred and forty-four thousand of them, but that they're not mobile in the way we are. Yeah, you know what I've seen, and I don't know if you have you ever watched the Matrix series. No. Oh, really? I I did see the film The Matrix. Yeah. But I didn't see anything after that. Yeah, there was three. It was part one, two, and three, but and the third one I think it was. Um, at the end, he meets the mainframe computer, and this is in the Anathor. Yeah. But the, it's it's like a, like a ball, and it's all spiky. 
Yeah, well, that's what they're supposed to be. Yeah, like hedgehogs. <laughs> hedgehogs. Yeah. And and what I see them as is they are in a kind of a subway mm-hmm. uh, vehicle. Uh, even better than that, when I was a kid, there was a department store that had a um, a way of sending cash to the office from the floor of the store. It was a series of pipes that came uh, across the ceiling and down to each cash register. And every so many minutes or hours, they would take a cartridge and they would put the bills in it and close it up and stick it and it would be sucked up Mm -hmm. and end up in the office where they had better security and would count the money and put it in the bank from there. Uh, that is what I see them as being able to move by in the geodesic structure, which is the Moho discontinuity. But they have no physical role, as far as I can figure out, since all the decision-making processes are with the mainframe computer. So they could travel... And and the equivalent of what I'm talking about in travel would mean they travel by submarine. And if they're going to go on, on the surface of the planet, that's why the term whales is used. Um, Amazing Grace, the song Amazing Grace, mm-hmm. has a subtitle. And the subtitle is Prayer to the Whales. Oh, wow. So when you when you have the story of Jonah falling overboard and picked up by a whale, that basically means picked up by a submarine. Yeah. George Bush Senior. So how, how old do you think the submarines are? That oh. Well, uh, there was a movie about the beginning of submarines uh, in Germany called Das Boot. Das Boot. I watched that. One. And and. Uh, uh, I think it was an allegory for the fact that submarines have been around forever. <laughs> oh, man. At, at least before the Ice Age. Oh, my God, man. We're, we're left out of the loop for real. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Jimmy Carter is so important today, because he was the uh, the captain of the first nuclear submarine, which basically is their end times laboratory. Mm. If you're going to genetically engineer babies, what better place to do it than in a nuclear submarine that physically can can even spend two years underwater and is is shown as a, a place of security for the top echelon yeah. of the system. Yeah, it must be. Have you ever watched uh, The Stand? By Stephen King. That's, no, that's another good movie. It's actually, but I, when I say Jimmy Carter, I don't really mean Jimmy. Oh, really? <laughs> what do you I mean? mean? I, I mean his wife. Oh. Because he's basically uh-uh. trolled. Yeah. That's what the role of we men are. Yeah. It's so. Oh man, the to me. <laughs> I'm at the point where, like, wow, this is like a, I was like a horror movie, and you're just like, I'm over it, get over it. Yeah. This is reality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but um, what's? I'm gonna have to leave you soon because I gotta go feed the animals at the barn at five o'clock, and it's almost five now. So. Uh, all right. Um. Uh, I just, I, I just want to know, like, like what, what's the meaning of like, um. The symbol, like the sacred heart of Jesus Christ, and these things. Like, well, we are Jesus. Mm-hmm. We suck and we blow. <laughs> we suck, and that's what the thing with the Taurus. You and said we're we... going to be crucified. Yeah, well, yeah, we're we are be. being crucified, and we are put through the passion, um, 
because jobs and and uh, church and all of that are you know the nails in the feet yeah. and family mm-hmm. the nails in the hands job nail in the other hand religion genetic engineering the spear under the ribs the media the crown of thorns uh, all that needs to happen now is that we're knocked off yeah. and and this is where it begins and it's a period in time that began uh, officially in the 1998-99 period and uh, will go to 58, 59, 60 years. But you have this play you've got to take into consideration. So uh, 2062 for the Northern Hemisphere, 3062 for the Southern Hemisphere, by then uh, uh, the effects of uh, uh, Alder Amin uh, will make it difficult to live on the surface of the planet. Therefore, uh, only those that live in the Moho discontinuity will be able to sit out its passage. How long is that? I don't know, 10,000 years? whatever. After that passage uh, of uh, Alder Amin, the solar system basically returns to its original state uh, around the solar system, around the sun. However, the sun will have been decreased uh, dramatically and probably the place uh, within the solar system that is most appropriate for life then would be Venus, where there would be no males because there, Venus has no arms. The Milo oh. is, is the model, no arms, so it means no males on the surface, although the male is present inside in the pseudo-hermaphrodite called the unicorn. Yeah. And a- Aphrodite is this another symbol? Yeah, I I I've actually seen the book it's actually free yeah. on internet. The, I, I don't know how you pronounce and it. And Editorpa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Editorpa. That's a pretty uh, yeah. looks like in- really interesting. Oh. It's basically the story of uh, of a mason mm-hmm. uh, like Captain Morgan, the man who did it, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. who's brought down and shown. You know what's there and what's happening, and 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 they don't mind telling him anything because nobody will believe it anyways. Mm-hmm. Nobody will even recognize him when he's back on the surface and he walks down the street. And, hey, buddy, how are you? And the people look at him like, you know, it's, uh, somebody they don't want to touch. <laughs> yeah, he's this person with no face, and yeah. but. Was it supposed to be like the new man, or he, he's basically the um, the guy like me who tells the story? Oh, okay, it's like the Invisible Man by Ralph. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I'm gonna read that story. <laughs> um. All right, I guess. So I'll... Gather up your questions for the next time. <laughs> all right. Bye for now. Okay. Bye.